Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be howling at the moon, but we're also gonna be cleverly trying to figure out a magic word. You put those two things together, werewolves and words, and you get Werewords, which is the hidden identity word game by Bezier Games. Today, we'll be focusing on the deluxe version of Werewords, which has seven new roles, which now allows you to play from four all the way up to 20 players. And with special rules, you can now play for two or three players, and I'll be showing you that as well. Werewords plays in 10 minutes for ages eight and up, and today we're gonna to be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you have a certain section of the rules that you wanna to jump to. Without further ado, let's get started. Werewords is the hidden identity word game for 4 to 10 players, where everything revolves around a magic word for that round. Everyone will be asking the mayor yes or no questions as to what the magic word is, and they'll be given the answers as tokens. The seer also knows the magic word and is trying to guide the team to get it easier. But watch out because the werewolves are on the prowl, and if they can sniff out who the seer is, the werewolves will win in the end, even if the magic word is guessed. But if the magic word isn't guessed, the village team can try to put an end to it by killing any of the werewolves. The game comes with a free, innovative app that you can download and quickly and easily set up the different roles, change difficulties, and change settings like music and narration. And this deluxe version comes with seven new roles, so now you can play with up to 20 players. It also has special rules, so you can play with two or three players. Let's see if you can guess the magic word as the villager team or detract them from it if you're the werewolf team. To set up your first game, you're going to find these three roll cards. You're gonna find the mayor, the seer, and the werewolf. You'll then add enough villager tiles so that the total amount of roll tiles are the number of players playing plus one. In this case, we're playing a four player game, so there's a total of five tiles there. You'll then shuffle face down all of those roll cards and you'll deal one to each player. Since we use one more tile than the number of players, there'll be one tile in the middle of the table that belongs to no one. At this point, whoever has the mayor roll will flip their card up. The mayor will then take the middle card and secretly look at it so no one else can see it. This is the mayor's secret roll. There is a possibility that the mayor card is the one in the middle. If it's your first game of the night, simply reshuffle all the rolls and redeal them out. If it's at least the second game, then whoever was left of the mayor from last turn will be the mayor. They'll take this tile in front of them, and the tile that was theirs is their secret roll. The mayor is then going to take the insert that's in the box and place it in front of them. This will help facilitate giving out the tokens throughout the game. On the larger side, you have the green check mark yeses and the red X's noes, and these are double sided for yes and no. The question marks are maybes, the exclamation point is so close, this is way, way off, and this is correct. Next, you'll need to install the free WearWords app on your iOS or Android device. You can go to beziergames.com to find the app quickly. The object of the game revolves all around a magic word. Each game, one of two words will be secretly selected, like son-in-law or fairy. Now, depending on the side you're on, you're either going to be trying to figure out this magic word or trying to keep everybody from figuring it out. Anybody with a secret roll card that has a blue background is known as being on the villager team. Anybody that has a red background secret roll is known to be on the werewolf team. The villager team is trying to get the magic word and the werewolf team is trying to stop them from getting it. First, we're gonna make sure we have the right version open in the app. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a gear icon. If you click that, at the very top, you'll see three versions. By default, you might have that middle version selected. You're gonna to wanna to select the deluxe version, which is on the upper right. So you click that where words deluxe box and a warning will come up and say, hey, you're gonna change editions. Go ahead and click yes. And now you'll see in the upper right, the where words deluxe edition is selected. And at the bottom left, you're gonna select the back button. And now you can see at the very top, you see where words, it's the deluxe edition there. 
Now we'll finish setting up the app for the roles that we're using this game. Here we see highlighted the seer, the werewolf, and two villagers, because those were the role tiles that we selected at the beginning of the game. If you ever want to deselect someone, you can just press on that player. So for example, let's say there's not a second villager. The one on the left will just tap and it will deselect. If we want to bring it back, we just tap it again and it will highlight. So now that we've got the right ones there, we're just going to go hit play at the bottom. Everyone, close your eyes. Mayor, wake up and tap your secret role. Now, if you remember, the mayor has a secret role too. Let's assume it's villager, so that's what they tap here. Mayor, choose a magic word. Now the mayor will get to select which one of these two words they want as the magic word. In this case, they choose kitchen. Mayor, here is your magic word. You'll now place the device in the center of the table and confirm the magic word. Mayor, close your eyes. Seer, wake up and view the magic word. So now only the seer is viewing the magic word. Seer, Close your eyes, werewolf. Wake up and view the magic word. And now only the werewolf is viewing the magic word. Werewolf, close your eyes. Everyone, wake up. You now have four minutes to figure out the magic word. Now this is the main part of the game where you have four minutes to try to figure out what that magic word is. And now during this four minutes, everyone in any order is asking the mayor questions that have a yes or no answer. Like someone might say, is it a noun? And uh, the mayor might say, well, yes, it is. And they'd place this yes in front of that player. Uh, is it a living thing? Then someone says that and they say, no, they put the no in front of them. If they're not sure, they can give maybe, for example. Now, one of three things is going to happen. Either someone is going to actually guess the magic word correctly or the mayor is going to run out of all of the yes and no tokens, or the time is going to run out. Let's go over all of those. Time is up. Oh no, you ran out of time. Everyone, you now have one minute to find the werewolf. So now you have one minute for everyone to talk about who is the werewolf? Who is the one that was trying to throw people off? So everyone's gonna be able to vote at the end of this time. And as long as the majority of the people are pointing at the werewolf, the werewolf has died and the villager team will win in the end. Time is up. Everyone, three, two, one, vote. Now let's say it looks something like this. Now, even though there's only three people asking questions to the mayor, there probably would have been more tokens in here, but let's just assume the pattern looks something like this. We have this player that had a couple of maybes, lots of no's. Was that the werewolf trying to throw us off? This one looks really good, lots of yeses, and this player didn't do much. Maybe they were trying to wait towards the end and then just give one good answer to look good. Well, let's say the majority of people vote at this player. This player would flip over their tile, and if it is the werewolf, well, the villager team would win instead. If it was not the werewolf, then the werewolf team would win. Now, if the people asked enough question that the mayor ran out of tokens, you'll press that one in the top left that looks like eight tokens with a line through it. You ran out of tokens. Everyone, you now have one minute to find the werewolf. So once again, just like if you had run out of time, the werewolf is going to win unless the majority of the people are going to vote for a werewolf. And just like everyone else, the werewolf will be voting too. And during these votes, nobody ever shows anybody their role. Now let's say somebody gets the word correct. You'd press the correct button up the top right. Congratulations, you discovered the magic word. Werewolf, turn your card face up. You now have 15 seconds to find the seer. So now the werewolf is going to try to guess who was the seer, who was the person that seemed to know the most, who was the one that was guiding people to the answer. And then the werewolf is going to vote by pointing at that person. Time is up. Werewolf, three, two, one, vote. So let's say we had a similar pattern to before, but since the magic word was found, the werewolf has flipped over their tile, and the werewolf's trying to figure out who was the seer, who was the one that seemed to know the most that was guiding them to the magic word. Is it this one with all the yeses, but a no? Or was it this one where that one yes really was the kicker and got us down the right path? Well, let's say they pick this one. This player would flip it over. Well, it's a villager. It was not the seer, so the village team would win anyway. But instead of doing this, if that player had selected here and indeed found the seer, then the werewolf would win. 
Now, what if the mayor wasn't a villager? What if the mayor was a seer? Well, if in that case, it will sometimes give the mayor an easier word since there's no seer out there to help guide the team. Now, if the mayor is actually the werewolf, since there's no werewolf out there, it'll sometimes give him a slightly harder word. And if the mayor is a werewolf, they can mislead with the answers they're giving, the yeses and nos, and they can actually lie about yes and nos to try to throw people off, but they've got to do it cunningly, or else when it comes time to vote for the werewolf, they might actually point at the mayor. Now, if you're playing with more than four players, you may want to mix in some additional roles. There's a second werewolf you can use, and when there's two werewolves, uh, during the day phase, when they're looking at the magic word, they also get to look at each other so they know who each other are. And then, if the magic word gets found by the village team and it's time for the werewolves to vote, they can talk amongst themselves, and they can also vote for different players. If either of the players from the two werewolves that have been voted on is the seer, then the werewolves will win. If the magic word is not guessed correctly, if either of the werewolves have the majority of the vote, the villager team will win. You could add the minion that's also on the werewolf team, hence the red background on the roll card. Now the minion will get to see who the two werewolves are, but they won't get to see the magic word. Now, if the magic word is not found and the majority of the vote points at the minions, well, the village team wins just as if they had killed a werewolf. If the mayor holds the minion card, well, the mayor can lie and deceive just as if he was a werewolf. And if the magic word is found, the minion does not reveal their role, they do not vote, they just stay quiet, and the two werewolves will flip over and talk about who the seer is and vote as normal. Now the fortune teller gets to wake up and see portions of the word. In this case, the magic word was the moon, and so here it got the T and the M, sort of like a Wheel of Fortune style. Now, if the players guess the magic word, the werewolves can still win by pointing at the fortune teller. And if the seer and the fortune teller are both in the game, the werewolves win if they point to either the seer or the fortune teller. Now, the apprentice is on the villager's team. If the mayor's secret role is the seer, well, the apprentice stands in for the seer and they'll get to see the word. However, if that word uh, is found at the end, the werewolves will try to point at the apprentice in this case. Now, if the mayor's secret role is the fortune teller, then the apprentice will be acting as the fortune teller and they'll get to see some of the letters as the fortune teller normally does. And again, if the uh, word is found, the werewolf team will be able to point at the apprentice to win as well. Now, this does help the village team because if the mayor's secret role is the fortune teller or seer, you're guaranteed to have that role in there, but it also makes it easier for the werewolf team during the voting because they don't have to worry about the mayor when they're trying to look for the seer or the fortune teller. Now, the beholder will not get to see the magic word, but they do get to see who the seer is. So they can sort of cover the seer's tracks and, and follow up with what the seer is saying so that if the magic word is found when the werewolves vote, if they vote for the beholder, the village team still wins. Of course, if the seer is voted by any werewolf, then the werewolf team would win and the village team would lose. Now, the thing is on the villager's team, and when they wake up, they will tap the shoulder of the player either to the left or right of them. Now, it's good for the village team because if they do that, that player will know that, hey, next to me is the thing and they're part of my team. However, if they tap the shoulder of the player next to them and that player is a werewolf, it's bad for the villager team because the werewolf now knows that the seer is not sitting next to them. Now, the doppelganger will be able to secretly look at any one player's role card, but now they are that role. In this case, they're the werewolf. And they'll tap that role in the app when they are called, and they're essentially going to do whatever that app tells them to do, which essentially is what that role would normally be doing. Now, at the end of the game, since this doppelganger really is a werewolf, if the magic word was not found and the doppelganger gets the majority of points at them, because they actually are a werewolf, the uh, village team will win in the end, just as if they were pointing at a real werewolf. And the same goes if she had looked at the minion. Now conversely, if the doppelganger had looked at either the seer or the fortune teller card, and the word was found, the werewolves can point at a doppelganger, and they would win as well because the doppelganger will be acting really as the seer or the fortune teller. The Masons are on the villagers' team, and they get to wake up and see each other, and this just allows them to know that they can trust each other as being on the villagers' team. Now, if there's only one Mason in the game, then that Mason will not wake up to see anybody in the night phase. Unless, of course, there is a doppelganger, and they will be acting as a Mason, they'll get to see each other. 
feel free to mix and match all these different roles to balance the game for your group. Now when setting up the app, you see on the bottom there it says Easy Words. That's a great place to start for your first few games. And then once you get the knack for asking questions, you can just tap right where it says Easy Words and you go to Medium Words, which are a little bit harder. And if you've got really smart literate group, then move to hard. And if you want some crazy challenge, then go to Ridiculous, where there's many words that many people probably have never even heard of. Now on the bottom right, the gear there, I'm going to show you Word Lists. The third section down says Word Lists. You can click Edit. And there's three sections here. The built-in list shows you the ones built into the actual app. The default is there selected, but you could select specific lists like celebrities or food or literature, monsters, 80s TV, video games. Now if I go back, there's custom lists, and this is where you could actually create a list name, and you could actually even type in the words that you want in those specific lists. But there's also community lists you can select there from the bottom. And it actually goes online. It looks at different lists that many people around the community have uploaded. So you can also search or you can filter for language or category or, di or difficulty uh, and things like that. When playing with two players, you'll always play with one villager, the mayor, and a werewolf. And then you'll also use either the seer or the fortune teller you get to choose. In this case, let's just say we use the seer so we have this. Now you'll give the mayor to one of the players, and if you're playing multiple games, each game you take turns being the mayor. Then you'll shuffle the other three tiles face down and randomly give one to each of the players, which means there's going to be one of the tiles that nobody has that still be face down in the middle of the table. In the app, you'll select only the seer and the werewolf, and notice in the bottom left it says two players. Then you'll go ahead and hit play and play as normal. Now, if the magic word was guessed correctly, whoever the werewolf was would flip their tile over. If in this case it was in the middle, meaning neither player had it, then both players actually win together. However, let's say they guessed the word correctly and the mayor was the werewolf. Keep in mind, the mayor, if they're the werewolf, can deceive and not tell the truth whether things are yes or no answers. They need to point at the seer. Was the person that was guessing the clues and got at the seer? Or was neither player the seer? They'll have to guess. Maybe they thought, you know what? You weren't the seer. You didn't really seem to quite know. You kind of barely got there. Let's point here. If the werewolf points at the seer, then the werewolf wins. Otherwise, if they don't, then the other player would win. And if it was guessed correctly and the guesser was the werewolf, they would flip their card up and they would have to point at whether the mayor was the seer or it was in the middle. Same thing, if the werewolf points to the seer, then the werewolf wins in the end. Now, if you get to the end and the word was not found, then both players will discuss who they think the werewolf is. But unlike the regular game, players cannot claim to be the seer or fortune teller if you're playing with them or the villager. Now, both players will point at either the other player or the card in the middle. If either player points at a werewolf, then that player wins. Let's say this player pointed here, and this player pointed here, and sure enough, the werewolf was sitting here. This player would win because they had pointed at the werewolf, and the magic word was not guessed. Now, if both players think the werewolf's in the middle, and they both point there, and it is in fact there, then both players have won because even though they didn't get the magic word, they were both able to find the werewolf. But if a werewolf is one of the players and they're not pointed at, let's say this player points here, this player points here, but this player is the werewolf, then this one would win. Of course, assuming that the magic word was not guessed. Now playing with two players is definitely a different experience because more often than not, both players are actually going to be able to see the magic word, but they're trying to pretend that they don't know it. And it's more about bluffing. Unless, of course, the mayor's a seer and the villager's here and they're both trying to get that word together. And even in cases where the other player is the seer, they get to see the word, but so does the mayor. But if the mayor is a villager, this player won't know if this player is the villager or the werewolf. So this player, even though they know the word, is trying to test the mayor with questions to see if they may or may not lie to find out, are they a werewolf or a villager? Is it safe to get the word or not? When playing with three players, you'll always have the mayor, a villager, and a werewolf. You'll also include either the seer or the fortune teller. In this case, let's just say we're including the seer. So here we have the three player game set up, the mayor has a secret role and so do the other two. You set up the app in the normal way, setting it up for three players. Now it's just like the normal game of werewords, but the emphasis is much more on bluffing and trying to figure out what the roles are of the other players. 
Now, playing with three players can be a really fun, unusual way to play Werewords because it will result in a lot of interesting strategies that you won't see in a regular game. For example, in this case, the mayor was the villager. Let's just show you that. And this mayor now knows that both of these players also know the magic word, so all players do. And these players have to sort of pretend like they don't know because they don't know what the other players are. And of course, the mayor can't say anything about which one is the seer. There's also another way to play werewords. It's called speed words. Now, this is sort of a change of pace with a quick challenge because players will have about half the time to figure out the word, but they'll be getting more information. To activate this, in the bottom right of the app, in between the play and gears, you'll see a stopwatch. If you go ahead and click that, then you'll see that the play underneath it says speed words, and on the left, the timer got cut in half, and it says speed timer. Werewolf, wake up and view the magic word. Tap one letter that all players will be able to see. Then tap the confirm button. So the werewolf is now going to be able to select any one of these letters and it's going to be showing this to them throughout the entire rest of the game once everyone's eyes are open. So here the werewolf confirmed E for the letter to be shown. So now in that shorter time frame to figure it out, the players can see how many letters it is and it will show the letter that was selected. If the letter was selected that how you know actually showed up more than once in that word, it would show it every time it actually was in the word. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into the deluxe version of where words and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read that rule book yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I placed a link below me in the description of this video and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified but so will Bezier Games.